Well, here today you find a very happy Manchester United fan. Yes, we did only win the game 2-1, but what I got today was everything I've been asking for basically for the last couple of months from Manchester United and from Eric Ten Hag in terms of a change of strategy. What is hilarious is going into this game, I mocked up this setup right here, just sort of as a joke to be like, oh, here's how we should have played. Because I think like everyone else, when we saw that starting lineup, the expectation was we were going to play like this. The standard 4-2-3-1 that we played every game so far this season, with Martinez coming in at left back, Eriksen and Casemiro sitting, Garnacho on the right, Rashford on the left, and Bruno off of Hoyland. At no point in the 102 minutes that we played today, because it was, there were six minutes added on in both halves, at no point in the 102 minutes did we play like this. Because... We actually played like this. Well, actually, to be specific, we actually played like this. And this was when we had the ball. And we had more of the ball than Brentford did. And because we played like this, we played so much better. And I'm so pleased that Ten Hag has finally taken the gamble to go for the three-back. Because I've been crying out for us to be playing a three-back all season long. Because it just suits the players that we have. And if you look at this system right here... There is not a single player that is playing out of a, what you would consider a natural position for them. When we play 4-2-3-1, Martinez isn't a natural left back. Garnacho, in my opinion, is not a natural right winger. Eriksen is not a natural holding midfielder. This, to me, is why we've been struggling so far this season. Flip it here, everyone's happy. You've got a back three where you've got Martinez and De Ligt who are comfortable stepping up into midfield with Johnny Evans sitting in deep. Dallow has the license to fully go forward and express himself from the right-hand side of midfield. Garnacho is more than capable of tracking back, so he's fine playing the left-mid-left wing-back role because he'll get himself forward, but he'll also track back and cover when needed. And then you've got the support from Hoyland and Rashford playing as a front two. Rashford can drop inside and still let him manipulate play over here. He can drift over to this side if he needs to because Hoyland's still going to be up front. And then you've got two creative midfielders in Eriksen and Bruno Fernandes floating around midfield with Casemiro just able to sit in. Now, the only issue that I sort of had with how we played, especially in the first half, is that this happened a little bit too often. Casemiro wasn't really staying. He was also joining in which then sort of led to the only real issue that I think we had in the first half, which was, again, turnovers, where we'd lose the ball here and then we'd still be out of position because essentially we'd have seven forward with just three staying back. What we did better in the second half is that if Casemiro did go forward, one of Eriksen or Bruno Fernandes would actually tuck in behind him, meaning that we had that defensive cover. And by actually playing like this, you relieve pressure off Casemiro. Because now you've got a box of five players around him. He can just stay in the middle of the pitch, do his defensive duties, win the ball back, and then play creatively, which is what he's good at. And this setup worked so, so well for us, especially in that second half. And like I said, it didn't really work fantastically in the first half. I didn't think we were that great in the first half. And obviously there was an incident right before half time that which we'll get to, which sort of really switched us on, got us into gear. But everything about this shape just works so, so nicely. I mean, it just, again, it just suits the players. And like I say, our biggest issue at the moment, in my opinion, when we've got the ball is the turnovers. And what was happening in that second half is if we did lose the ball up front, You've got that cover. So we don't have to rely on Rashford tracking back as much because Dallow and Bruno are already on this side of the pitch. Furthermore, because you've got a back three, if you lose the ball on the left-hand side of the pitch, Martinez can step up and deal with it here. If you lose the ball on the right-hand side of the pitch, De Ligt can step up and deal with it here because you've still got the two defensive players covering and Casemiro can drop back and Eriksen can drop back on the other side to allow De Ligt to move forward. And that's where actually our second goal came from. It came from a turnover where Martinez stepped up into midfield from the left centre-back position, got himself on the ball. It found its way to Eriksen. He played it into Bruno because these two were just sort of drifting around absolutely everywhere. Fed it into Hoyland and a brilliant finish from Hoyland. The first goal, obviously, at the start of the second half, again comes from this shape. Ball gets hit forward. Another good thing about this system is you can hit the ball forward because whether it's Hoyland or whether it's Xerxes, they can challenge the physical battles and have Garnacho running in down the outside and have Rashford running in through this side. Ball comes out to Rashford. He plays it to the back post and Garnacho is there because you've got an overload. 
Brentford are playing a back four. You've got Dallow making pressure on the right-hand side. You've got Rashford on the ball. You've got Bruno and Eriksen as options. You've got Hoyland attacking the middle, which means that their back four is already dealing with four people. So I've got to naturalise all this space around the outside that when Rashford drops in and hits that ball across, he's completely open and he gets the equalising goal. For me, I just want to see this shape going forward. And actually off the back of seeing how we've played today and recognising who we have available to us, I was then able to make this. You can actually change our entire 11 and still have everyone playing in positions that they're comfortable with. You've still got Bayandir in goal. You've got a back three of Euro, Maguire and Lindelof. It doesn't have to be Lindelof. Can Shaw can tuck in on the left back position. And then you can play Malassia or Anthony, in my opinion, on the left side in this, in this sort of setup. But probably more likely Malassia. You've then got Mazraoui who can play on the right hand side. Anthony can play on the right hand side if you're playing Shaw on the left hand side. Ahmad can obviously play up front. Depending on how you want to do it, you've got Ugarte who's there as the sitter and then you've got Mainu and Mason Mount as the two creative players in midfield. It works. It suits the setup of the players that we've got. And I'm so glad that this is what Eric Ten Hag has done in this game. He has gone from a shape where too many people would have been out of position again, which has been our biggest issue so far this season. He's created a system which suits everybody on the pitch and suits everyone else we have in the squad. And shock horror, we've played a lot better today. And I'm so pleased with Ten Hag that he's done that. And the coaching staff are getting this system working in what's probably been about three days. Because let's not forget, all these players have just come from international break. What I would say as well is this is obviously what we did when we had the ball. And like I said, when we lost the ball, it allowed the likes of Martinez and Talik to step up. What we then did once play settled down is we then transitioned into a shape like this where it was four at the back, Casemiro sitting on his own, two presses in midfield, Neriksen and Bruno Fernandes, and Rashford would then cover on the right-hand side. But again, he doesn't have to work as hard because he's playing in a two-up front formation where Dallow's already there. The only time Rashford ever had to cover was when Dallow made that run in field, which happened a few times because, again, playing in this shape allows Onana to be more progressive. He was getting on the ball, playing balls into Garnacho, who'd make that run, or Dallow, who'd make that run, and when Dallow did make that run, Rashford could then come back and cover because he'd already seen that Dallow's gone across in front of him. The link-up play, the relationships between the players were so much better today. And like I say, I'm just so pleased that Eric Ten Hag has done this. The only other thing I obviously have to mention is, of course, the reason why we came out for that second half with a lot more impetus, with a lot more anger and aggression is obviously because of the Matthias De Ligt head injury incident which resulted us in being down to 10 men and then Brentford scoring from the corner when we had 10 men. In my opinion, I think the referee had a very good game today and I think a lot of people are going to go, oh the referee did this, the referee did that, it's the referee's fault we conceded, blah de blah de blah. In my opinion, no. I think the referee let an awful lot go in the game. I think there were a few challenges from both teams that could have been pulled up for little like pullbacks or little trips, a few physical challenges. And for the most part, the referee let the game go on. I think he booked players at the right time. I think he did all of that right. And I think he dealt with the Matthias De Ligt situation to the best of his abilities. And quite frankly, the goal that we concede right before half time is an absolute embarrassment on the entirety of Manchester United's backroom staff. Because we have multiple opportunities to deal with the Licks head injury. It should have been dealt with when it initially happened, like two or three minutes into the game when he went down. How that was given as a free kick to Brentford, by the way, I don't really know. But the Lick got a knee to the back of the head a few minutes into the game. He had to go off. It was obviously bleeding then. They gave it a really quick patch job, sent him back out there. Few physical challenges later, it starts bleeding. Referee tells the Lick to go off. They patch him back up in about 10 seconds, send him back on there. It continues to bleed. He gets taken off again. The referee tells him to go off again. And Brentford score from the corner. That's not on the referee. The referee has an obligation to take players off the pitch when they are bleeding from anywhere part of the body. That, that is the rules of the game. They have to come off if they are bleeding. The lip was bleeding. He needed to come off. Why the coaching staff didn't spend one or two minutes properly patching him up, properly slapping the Vaseline on there, whatever they did to him at half time to make sure he would not have to come up again, is an embarrassment from Manchester United's medical team. They had to deal with it the first time it happened to make sure he wouldn't have to come off again. The fact that when the goal comes, it's the second time he has to go off in the space of five minutes is embarrassing 
on the Manchester United medical staff. Then you have the corner itself, which, okay, we're down to 10 men. But it's another set piece. And we're in the stupid box again. And for some reason, Dallow's marking Pinnock rather than having, I don't know, someone like Hoyland, someone like Casemiro, someone like Johnny Evans, the actual physical big players that are supposed to be dealing, in my opinion, with the big physical threats from the other team. Now, the argument is that where Pinnock heads the ball is where De Ligt would have been in the box, as in like the actual Man United box. But the problem is, right, why didn't we fill that gap? If we knew there was going to be a gap in the box, why didn't we fill the gap in the box? And even then, why are we playing the box? Because yet again, we've conceded from a set piece defending via the box system, which does not work for Manchester United. So whatever the set piece coach is doing, I don't like it. It needs to be scrapped. Just go back, in my opinion, to having the big physical players marking the big physical players and win your individual battle. Stop relying on a system which relies on the opposition to put the ball into your player's area rather than having someone like Dallow getting outstripped, outrun and then outmaneuvered and obviously the finish from Ethan Pinnock to make it 1-0. I've got no complaints from the referee side of things. Ten Hag can moan all he wants. He has to take his yellow card because his team did not deal with the situation correctly and his set-piece coach has not organised our set-piece defensive strategies to the best of our abilities. Final thing I would say, and the only real other disappointment coming out of this game, is that it was only two, because it really should have been more. I've not actually looked at the stats, so let me quickly whip the stats up on my phone, because I know it was one of our best attacking displays so far this season. So, we had 23 shots in that game, and 11 on target, and we only scored two goals. So that's my only other disappointment. We should have come away with that game with more goals, but it's the first time we played this system. We created more chances. We looked better on the ball. And hopefully going up against the Fenerbahce side, managed by former manager Jose Mourinho, I really want to see us play this system again. I don't want to see Masrawi come back into the team and all of a sudden against Fenerbahce, we're back to playing Masrawi at right back and Dallow at left back. If we do that, I think it'll be a step backwards. I said in the last video, rather than trying to do one step forward and it ending in two steps backwards, we need to take one step backwards to take two steps forwards. That's what we did today. We took a step back, we assessed the abilities of our players and designed a system to suit those players. By taking that step back in this match, we took the two steps forward. Hopefully, against Fenerbahce, we play like this, even if we change a few players round. I've already shown it. You can change the entire team and this system would still work. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As I say, I'm a happy Manchester United fan today. We're back into winning ways. We're moving up the table. Yes, all of the other teams around us did win. But, or should I say the competition for European places all did win today. But it's a positive, positive start. When you can employ a new system and it works straight away, that's a massive positive. We've now just got to back it up against Fenerbahce in, on Thursday night. And fingers crossed we do that. Thank you very much for watching. As I say, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below on the system, on the Delict incident. But ultimately, share your love in the comments for what was a really good Manchester United performance today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very soon.